What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Ebony, and I'm back with another video, another message, another level of understanding, another word from the Most High God. Okay, y'all, please excuse me because I'm a little congested today. I'm trying to breathe as I talk, okay? But um, this word that God gave me to steward, to carry, to give out, to distribute to you guys. It's heavy, okay? It's pressing real heavy, but it's talking about so much greatness. And right now, I'm literally going to pray right now for you guys that your heart may be shifted in the name of Jesus to a posture and a position in which you're able to receive this word in which you're able to understand this word as nourishments to your body, as food to your soul, as water that quenches you. Okay? In the name, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray you receive this word. So, God had me look up Genesis 1 verse 1. And then Genesis 11, chapter 11, 1, okay? And each of these significant time frames in the Bible, they represent new beginnings. I'll place both scriptures here on the screen for you to see from. And I will pray that you go ahead and take this notion of understanding and read more on this subject, okay? And let God talk to you about this. But what I perceive from understanding of what God was giving me to release is that this, the, the number 111 or 11, yeah, 111 or the number one represents new beginnings. In the beginning of Genesis, it is discussing how God was creating the world. In the beginning, he started to release certain things into the atmosphere of the earth when the world had no voice, okay? And it was complete darkness. And God uttered, let there be light. Okay? I'm trying to see you guys. Make sure I can see you, but let me see. What just happened here? Okay. I don't want to get distracted. I rebuke distractions. Hopefully you can see me, guys. Because I can't see you guys. But I'm going to keep going. So, it was a position in the Bible. It was a part in the Bible where there was no voided places. There was no voids. And God said, let there be light. Okay? That is when God started to grow things. That is when God started to... um create vegetation for the earth and for the fruits of the earth and when he created light okay light light is a resting place so what i would say is from that scripture and the next scripture what i perceived is all connected Okay, somebody say it's all connected. Somebody say it's all connected. All right, y'all, considering the fact, considering the fact we cooking right now, God had to stop me like, hold on, hold on, hold on before you get started. Go get your cookbook, go get your recipe. So earlier today, God had, wrote, uh, had me write down some things that is tying into this um memoir into this circumstance into this situation into this understanding that i'm expressing and it's all connected okay so i'm gonna read down exactly what god had me write and you guys just you know stay tracking with me stay tracking with me okay um so the book the story in the Bible, right? Let me talk to y'all. In the Bible, I want to talk to y'all about Ruth. Everybody knows Ruth. Everybody knows the story of Ruth. If you don't, go look it up. It's a small Bible by the um, 
book of Judges. I think it's in between Judges and near Samuel or the end of Samuel or King, somewhere in that area, right? And it's this short book um, expressed about um, this young girl who traveled really far accompanying someone else into a new land, okay, where she ended up changing her whole life story met a man got married had kids but i'm a i'm going to talk to you guys today about the details the details of what god wanted to discuss with you guys the details of what he want us to focus in on on this video everybody when i heard about ruth talks about her and boaz the man that decides to discover her or marry her but what i what stood out to me at this time was the relationship that this lady this young lady had with her mother-in-law where i come from it's irregular where i come from we don't see this on a daily where i come from to have the mother and the daughter the mother-in-law and the daughter on the same page united as one talking understanding each other communicating compassionate towards each other no matter what's going on or situation is going on between the child that the child is into or married this child ruth this daughter ruth was actually in she actually knew the the mother because she was in relationship with her son she was married to her son at the time okay and so look i hope y'all stand with me i know it's a little bit i'm like taking the car and i'm driving it everywhere which way but i'm gonna bring it all together okay it's all connected so the but the the uh the son was in relation with Ruth at the time and that's how she met her mother-in-law so it really it really dawned on me it really opened up a question in me about the mother and the daughter relationship because when you don't see something all the time or often and you see things that happen that is rare you kind of zone in on it. You kind of pay attention to it. So God has me speaking to people who has been rejected from their family or from their upbringing or maybe don't have a connection with their own family that they do with strangers. This is what God told me to tell y'all. Okay. Your biggest, sometimes your biggest um, blessing or your biggest transformation comes from who you are attached to, comes from who you are connected with. What God had me write down is this. When Ruth and Naomi experienced very unexpected loss, a, a very unexpected loss it changed their lives for the better but before it did they had to experience or endure the hardship of staying over into new territories um some and old renown to the mother to her mother so what i'm saying here is this they both received the unexpected loss so the son ended up getting ill and dying then Ruth ended up choosing to stay with her mother-in-law and so the woman is losing a husband the mother is losing a son now you would think where I'm from or maybe whoever else is watching can relate to this that they will separate you know, they would separate, go they separate since the person who brought them together is no longer in the picture. But instead, Ruth surprises me and chooses to do something that is in my own life of living unhumane. Like you don't really see often or extraordinary or supernaturally thoughtful or compassionate. Just a good open heart. She chooses to stay with the mother, right? Now... Their lifestyles of how they live were completely different from one another. But it's, but still within that, they still had respect for each other. They still had love. Sometimes when you are different from, each, from, from the person that you may be connected to, all you can give them is love. All you may have to give them is what you got, what's in your hands okay to steward all you may be able to do is give them certain things that um they can handle you feel me they can handle at that time 
And so you never know how far that will go just by being who you are out of love, out of respect, not trying to judge nobody, allowing God to be the judge. Just like Jesus said, I didn't come to judge the world. Okay, I came to bring peace and love. I came to bring love and spirit of truth. Okay, he said he got a. There's a God up in heaven that judges. Okay, so let me stay on track. But basically, all she had to give her was who she was at that time. But that very thing that she ended up giving her, the mother-in-law to Ruth, was a big, big stone, a big, big um gem to her, a big, big stone, a, a heavy thing that Ruth was always in need of. Her her whole family didn't have time to give that to her. So she respected that thing. She took it to heart. She took it seriously. She allowed that thing to shape her and mold her into who she was. And all it really was was love. So I find it funny that although they although they were experiencing loss at a time in their life, although they were experiencing lack, although they were going through certain things, they allowed those things to bring them closer together rather than separate rather than apart and the significance in this story is this i'm gonna keep reading many times along their journey they became very thoughtful in the in the times of scarcity through unknown outcomes and great depressions from their trials and their losses one living a completely different lifestyle than the other non-judgmental towards the younger one younger one's process through persuasion to love again by the way the younger one's process of becoming instead being all that she needed through persuasion to love again abundantly in a way that shaped her to continue on with her compassion they shared for one another okay so this made the younger girl walk away completely from her past life to start a completely new one with the mother and leaving behind her old ways of thinking and living through idolatry building a covenant with the one true god and no one from her village was able to birth this transformation within god says god says you your blessing your transformation it's oftentimes in who you are in connection to. You could go in one relationship thinking you're there for a person you choose to settle down with, but God have other plans for you to be complete. Sometimes by a stranger to you of giving edification, edification that your own natural family couldn't do. Okay, so... I'm going to go ahead and break this whole thing down. Let's go ahead and slay this, right? Let's slay this so we can really eat because we really be needing to eat sometimes. We Not a physical food, but a spiritual food. So let's get this. Let's go ahead and get this word out. Everybody highlighted Ruth when she was at her point in her relationship. But a lot of people forgot to highlight how she got there God is saying your biggest blessing your biggest transformation oftentimes can come by who you're connected to okay who you're in connection with who you're attached to you can get in the midst of a moment of being honored for a relationship a job a position a gift it doesn't matter any shape and form you fit in how it applies to you you can most time get honored for the height that you feel uh that the other people feel about your life that is most valuable to them and what they want or desire but there is one thing that had ruth in a way where the attachment, the connection, it was the biggest point of her life that some people missed, that some people failed to look at. They got so carried away with looking at her marriage and her family and the fruit of her tree, but they forgot to look at her transformation.
They forgot to look at how God did that thing in the beginning when he walked her out of idolatry, when he walked her out of serving Baal worship, when he walked her out of a whole contemporary lifestyle of culturalistic activities, of killing children, aborting children, sacrificing certain things by doing certain rituals. To attach her to later greatness because of her, yes, to walk the path that God set for her. The way that God show up, it might not make sense, okay? And that's just what happened. When Ruth got in bed with her, her relationship, I'm pretty sure she never thought that that was going to change her life. I'm pretty sure that she probably felt like she was going to settle down with this man. That she loved this man that she was with. But God had other plans for her. God had other intentions and expectations for her to achieve. He didn't just stop right there when she found the person that she thought she found. And that's why I love God. Because God going to take something from nothing and bring it to something. Okay? Okay. Because that's when you really get to see the glory of the Lord. That's when you really get to see the supernatural abilities that our father has. The simple fact that this girl was able to link with this man brought her to her freedom by connecting to something she had never been able to store. Something she had never been able to have. Her mother-in-law. Her mother-in-law had been so good to her. And she had been so good back to her. That they created such a bond that set off a chain reaction for her to keep going forth to unbuild and unlock other portions of herself that she never got to discover. Hear me in the spirit. Hear me what I'm saying, child of God. Sometimes the person you choose is not who God choose. Sometimes the person or the breakthrough you walk through for your life that you want for your life is not who God choose and what God chooses to deliver you or chooses to uh, bless you with. Sometimes you got to be grateful for what God sent your way, the blessing that he gave you. Okay? Because had she known, <laughs> had she known she was going to get a part two to that, you understand? Listen, listen, y'all, listen. Had she known she was going to get ready to walk into a new dimension with God, had she known all of that, she may not been able to make it. She may have been worried. She may have been distracted. She may have been not able to carry the understanding of what to do. She may have been focused on everything that was familiar to her. Okay. And so this is what the definition of, of, of glory looks like. The definition of glory looks like God's glory looks like taking something that looks impossible. Okay. Of changing to making it 10 times, 20 times. Okay. Supernaturally greater than where it came from so god attached this lady to this other lady right and what stood out to me was when ruth told the woman where you it got to a point after the, the mother-in-law lost her son she was ready to detach from ruth because she just wanted to do the right thing she felt like where, where her being attached to ruth came from her uh she thought ruth was feeling came from her son but the genuine of their friendship, the genuine of their relationship, Ruth was actually more connected to her than what she lost. Hear me now. <laughs> Hear me now. Because when God do a thing, when God do a thing, that thing that's in your heart that you desire, you shall so have it. Because you will know that thing. It will not be um, distant from you. You will feel a, a root connection to it. To understand it almost immediately. Even when physically it's making no sense at all. Even when physically every everything that you're supposed to look at. for To, for, to try to see the fruits of what's matching up in your mind. Doesn't match and doesn't make sense. But there is some type of yearning in your heart for this thing. That you just want so badly. That you don't want to separate from because you feel that it's good for you you feel that if you just go along with it if you just follow through with it if you just work hard and if you just commit to it you will be able to produce something greater in the end there's a knowing on the inside of you that god has put there that makes you link 
and connect to it, even when they try to push you away, even when they may be trying to do the right thing and, you know, to send you over there because, you know, like the mother-in-law said, you know, Ruth, my son is gone now. Imagine her being hurt. Imagine her being um, not knowing what way to go. Imagine her being in confusion at that moment of depression, of losing a son, losing a battle, an unexpected one. Put your place there. Shift your heart there to understand where I'm coming from. Imagine her not having that same support that she had to go to. Her son was, well, he, he provided for her. He was the man, okay? He worked. That's where they got their money from. That's where they ate from. Imagine her whole world just changing unexpectedly. And she's left with not a clue on what to do next. So through her heart posture, trying to do the right thing, she thinks she's doing what's best for her by telling her, okay, maybe you guys, maybe because it was another person along with Ruth that was traveling with the mother-in-law. She like, maybe y'all should go back to your family. Maybe you should go back. Um, Naomi told Ruth, maybe you should go back with your mother because I'm not your mother. And she was being right. She like, I'm not your real mother. You know what I'm saying? But one thing about spirit spirit will connect you there's a saying that they used to say blood is thicker than water <laughs> depends on what blood depends on what blood we talking of the blood of jesus yeah because that water it connect by spirit you gonna feel it in your spirit this person is connected to you you gonna feel it within you but there are family members that may have the same blood in their veins as you but yet they don't connect to you the way that god does and so what ruth told naomi was like where you go i will go this lady was willing to leave everything behind. What 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 God you follow will be my God. Okay? She literally, she literally put it in the rear view mirror and kept it packing. She did not want to detach from her because it was something within her feeling that the connection of this woman that she had never had was assigned to her greater within that she didn't even know. She hadn't yet discovered. So listen, you guys. What I'm saying to you is this. God says sometimes your, con your greater connection, your greater blessing, your greatest transformation is, is who you connected to. Although her husband had died, although she has experienced that loss, that depression, although she left her familiarity of her culture, lifestyle of idolizing these gods and deities, this different way of living that she learned to live her whole life and end up being consumed by her environment and practicing, the, practicing these same ways and tactics and, and, and thinkings and logics. Although that was all she knew, she decided to go against that and step out on faith and connect with this lady that she felt that she wanted to do the right thing also. So as Naomi was trying to do the right thing for her, Ruth decided that she needed to be doing the right thing for her, which was not leave her in a time of hurt, which is not leave her in a time of depression, which is not leave her when she don't have a job, which is not leave her because the lady was of an uh, older age. Uh, uh, Ruth felt like if she go out and try to start her life over on her own, she wouldn't even make it without her. And, they, and, and, and Naomi... Naomi was just trying to do the the the, the most uh, uh uh compassionate thing, you understand. But in these same groups of understanding, they were helping one another. In these same groups of understanding, they they, they logics connected in such a way they were different but um uh, connected still at the same time. That's a word for somebody. That's a word for somebody because although their roots were different, although th th their logics were different, their hearts operated still in the same kind of structure. That's a God thing. That's something that the outside world can't take from you. You understand? So although the physical was different at that time, right? <laughs> God was getting ready to make Ruth equally yoke to her abundance to her blessing to her transformation god says this sometimes you start at a lower position okay and you may not be equally yoked to who god called you to okay and you may actually have to be going through a lifestyle of wrong in order to learn what is right sometimes you may even get lost in the field 
Sometimes you may even practice the same things that you feel in your heart that may not be right, but yet you in this environment and you in this lifestyle. So according to their laws and their rules over there, you chose to abide by them, okay? But there was something that never left or escaped you was the fact that the desire that God placed in you for more, for better, for greater, for freedom. And when you get that opportunity and when you get that door open, when you get that door open, you take that opportunity. You don't sit there and allow confusion to come in the midst of it. You don't sit there there and allow what, what went wrong, the loss or the lack of a circumstance uh, uh, make you get away from your opportunity. Listen. This far fetched, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it because y'all know I could be a little bit. I could get a little bit of cray cray, and I'm gonna do it. But have y'all ever seen that movie, um, Annie? Annie with Jamie Foxx, and I don't know the other young girl actor, but it's a really good movie called Annie with Jamie Foxx in there. And a little girl, she on the stage, okay? <laughs> she made it to the stage, but she could not read. And nobody knew her secret, okay? And she get on this stage, and she found this opportunity to have a family, and she sings this song. And it was, I don't know the words to all of it. I never know the words to all of it, okay? Don't quote me. But it's like something goes like, this, I'm witnessing my moment, you see. Wait, it's something like, opportunity. I'm witnessing my moment, you see. That's the only thing. Look at me in this opportunity. That's all I can get right now. That's all I can connect. But don't allow it. God, what you see? You see, okay. Whoa. I'm putting on my best show. Look at me and my opportunity. That's what I have for y'all, okay? That's what God gave me for y'all. Listen, she witnessed in her moment. So, okay, let me take y'all through real quick. Let me roll the windows up. I'm getting a little cold. But, um, so as she basically take this chance, this opportunity that's different without the person she originally went into the covenant with, no longer being there is only her and this person <laughs> that typically would be a stranger. But the, the, the bond, the, the tie that, um, uh, Ruth had to Naomi, she told, she felt as though she treated her better than her own mother had time to do. You understand? So when you witness a real love, when you witness a love so big that transforms you, changes you, make you to be better, you feel me? Without without breaking you down or judging you or making you feel so bad about yourself, but study encourages you to do more and be better for yourself and change your entire life, baby. <laughs> That's God, honey. That is God. That is a God-ordained relationship. You understand? Can't nobody, nobody come in between what God connects you when it's a God-ordained thing. Okay? So this is what I wanted to say. This is what I want to close with. There was a time in my life when God was call, calling me out of familiarity, calling me to change, calling me to move into a different direction in my life in which I first knew, call, calling me to go against everything that was comfortable for me or familiar to me, allowing me to leave my hometown and move into Ohio, where in this town, God had already walked out ahead of me. In this town, God had already been here, lined up everything, every place where I was going to need to be, sleep, eat, wherever. Okay. All with my children, my four kids. He caught me out here, right? I've been in this town for six years total. But before I came, before I left, my world was at a loss. My world, my entire life of existing, so where I was at was not, it was an unexpected loss, an unplanned moment, okay? And I talk about it in my book. I talk about it in my book. And I'm going to allow you guys to 
get that fruit when it's time in due season okay but i i call it my walk on water moment okay <laughs> and the way god orchestrated it was he connected me to somebody who was already out here we wasn't in blood relation no but by spirit God had ordained that thing so well to the point where I trusted this leap of faith of moving here and only knowing one person okay or 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 even a couple of people like a, a person and their kids okay so this is this is not the part that connect me to certain things this is the part where i'm going to tell you guys what how my story changed i came from what was familiar and what i grew up with i'm the only girl out of all boys so y'all know boys is they are a lot to to manage and my thing is i never had that mother who had time enough to relate to me understand me um take time to just be compassionate loving encouraging you know what i'm saying to who i was internally right but when i got here god had a mother for me already created he had a godmother who took notice in me who believed in me who who who, who took time to uplift me call me encourage me any dream I had to believe in for myself, okay? Before I knew I could write, she encouraged me on these things that I didn't even know was tied and connected to my destiny. It was tied and connected to who God already called me to be. But she, God had to separate me from everything that I knew that was not serving me to who he called me to be. And so this lady that God orchestrated in my life, her, her and her husband provided the necessary fruit, established the necessary place for me to be encouraged, for me to grow in the spirit, mature in the spirit, to see God in a way that changed my life forever. Because I did not know the God I was serving then was not the God of the most high God was not the God of heaven who he called us to be who he who, who we really come from it wasn't in the right way it was very lukewarm it was very deceptive okay so you really gotta be careful with being comfortable where you at and familiar where you at and knowing God on a level in which you know him because in those times or those traps you can quickly get caught up with serving two masters serving a whole nother God a whole nother deity a whole nother lifestyle and miss your door of opportunity miss your door God will do a thing for you and change your whole direction, your path. He will create a new beginning. He will call you out, separate you, isolate you. But if you're not corrected on his path, you will allow yourself, even after the isolation of separating from your hometown of familiarity, going to one state to another state, you will easily walk off the door, walk off the ark, walk off the boat. <laughs> And, and, and literally go back to your old habit habitation go back to the old way you operate you understand if you're not careful if your heart place ain't in the right place with God so many people highlight Ruth's moment when she met the man of her dreams because that did come she did meet a Boaz she did have a child she did get married you understand but so many want to walk to that part and not experience the transformation part. So many want to be here, but not go through the process, not experience the loss, not take the faith moves, not walk through the sacrifices, not have that relationship or that bond with a God ordained mother that God sent you or a God ordained friendship or a God ordained ch church person or a God ordained friend or a God, a God ordained relationship first to get to the next season of your life and so they try to jump to this first and skip this 
but in order to get this the correct way which is the husband the kids and everything else you got to go through the process first you and you can't skip it <laughs> you can't skip it and i really have learned that i need some water y'all and i really have learned that in my life because i tried it let me be your failure <laughs> okay don't do it sis don't do it don't let the enemy trick you up for a counterfeit moment when God got you on a on a narrow direct path to for you to fulfill each portion that he created to complete you and your destiny, your assigned purpose of why he called you to be who you are. To go ahead out the path, go into the woods and chase little trails of food, snacks and all this other good stuff, whether it's yeah, I hope this is a good audience, a grown up audience. Sex, the chase sex, the chase uh relationships to chase money to chase anything that is not aligned with god call, who god called you to be at that season of your life because if you do you'll keep eating from that trail that the enemy feeding you from until you look up and you're in a cage okay and, and that point of that of that cage is to take you away from the the exact plan that god created you to become And so, this is the thing about it. Let's let's speak to the folks who have done this or maybe still here. If you notice that you are in a position of your life and you don't hear God the way that you used to, God is quiet now. And you feel as though you have betrayed who you were betrayed where you were going you have become confused you can't find the way to escape because the doubts have raised themselves higher than the intuition then you have to result in forgiveness you have to understand that nobody is perfect on the journey or the walk with christ you have to allow yourself enough time to grieve over what you've done wrong and confess those sins to one another, to God, to whoever around you that you can talk to, that you trust with those emotions. You have to put yourself in a position where you're being completely 100 with you and God or honest with yourself and forgiving yourself for whatever trap that you done stepped out into whatever counterfeit moment the enemy done persuaded you or highlighted to you before god was done working on you okay and i feel like that's everything y'all i feel like that's everything nope it's not it's not everything so look this is this is what y'all gonna eat off of in reality god told me to go to Genesis 1 verse 1 okay and I'm gonna put it here on the screen for y'all but before I go there this is one thing that God is talking to me about he is saying this you can choose where you want to live your life out in this reality and in Bible form spiritually if you say yes to God anywhere along your story of your life you god will allow you to endure that season he will allow you to go through it all the way to the end baby until you make it down to revelation and once you get that good revelation that real good truth ooh, that set you free babe babe by that point you gonna already know what you did you gonna already know you gonna been already grew from what you done okay you gonna been already understood <laughs> you gonna have the wisdom the knowledge the understanding of everything <laughs> that you should have could have would have did but you didn't that you maybe did and you shouldn't <laughs> you gonna just know you gonna know what is it for you and what ain't for you. What is for you and what ain't for you. You gonna know what's not for you. You understand? So once that revelation come, I'm pretty sure 
if you chose yourself first before you chose God first, you had to experience the curse before you experienced the blessing. <laughs> and that's why I love Jesus. Because if God, let's say if God never created Jesus, y'all, we will be stuck on the same chapter, the same story, the same habitual, habitual habit over and over and over and over again. But because Jesus died for our sins, because of his salvation, because of him, we can experience redemption. So, there is a question I always ask God. God, what's what's happening at the rev after Revelation? When I first read the Bible, I wanted to read Revelation. I wanted to read the part where everybody was talking about it was so scary, this, that, and the third. This was even before I could walk through experiences. I was only 16, but I was still wanting to know what happened in Revelation that everybody's so creeped out about, you know? You only so creeped out about certain things when you don't come to terms with them. When you don't, when you, when you, yeah, that's another topic for another date, but I ain't going to stay there. I'm going to just say this. When you ain't truthful with yourself and you deny certain things or you live in denial, you scared of revelations. You scared. But we know God didn't give us a spirit of fear. So you better check what God you working with. You better check what God you know. You better understand who. I ain't going to go there with you, but God will. God will. So, I wanted to know what was in Revelation. You understand? So, once I understood what was in Revelation, I seen that there was, like, all of what it was about was talking based beyond the curse that had took place from beginning to the end of the book, starting from Genesis to Revelation. And I'm going to deal with just the curse because in the end of Revelation, when God came back down from heaven, Unto the earth after God judged the world and did everything he did. The world was supposed to start again. The world was supposed to be rebuilt. The Garden of Eden was going to become back new. Made whole. God has highlighted Genesis 1 and 1. And then Genesis 11. Both of them are starting from new beginnings. The very first Genesis 1 and 1 was talking about when God created the earth and the earth had no voice. And then it started from there was darkness all around and God said, let there be light. Genesis 11 is when God is when after God had isolated Noah and his family in the ark. And they were supposed to start a new world. And God chose to scatter the people in their languages so that they wouldn't build a, a, a tower of Babel. Okay? Yeah. Specifically so, they would try to be too high on themselves and go against God again. After the world was defiled and after the flood, when he started the world over, some of the people went right back to their natural habitat of when before they got on the boat. Okay? So, like I said, the biggest steps that I had to learn to get to get rid of on my journey was familiarity and comfortability. If y'all can fight those two enemies within yourself, y'all can become so much greater. Y'all can become healed. Y'all can become all the things that maybe somebody in your life haven't told you you can become because they're fearful that you might get it before them. I'm going to let y'all know. Understand this. Those desires that's placed deep down within you, they're rooting from a place that is connected to God. God is saying it's, it's who you connected to is where you can go. It's who the attachment is with is where you can go. It's where you can become. Your biggest transformation, your biggest blessing. You don't need nobody but the connection of God. God will bring what you need. You understand? When Ruth finally made it over to the new land with Naomi, Naomi had traveled this life before. She was older, wiser. You understand? So she's already knowing what her people was like. But Ruth now have to experience a new set of people who going to correct you when you're wrong. Who going to let you know that, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> before you even do something wrong this is what's wrong because they was on her head over there they are like yeah this that and the third she don't 
she don't uh she can't she used to be practicing an idolatry she worship another god and da, da, da. you know these these sometimes them church folks they don't let you remember nothing they don't let you i'm sorry they don't let you forget nothing they don't let you forget your past okay but the crazy thing is is when you want something bad enough when you desire something bad enough when god put that desire in your heart you go work at it you gonna keep going you ain't gonna give up on that thing so ruth studied she studied their laws more than they knew they laws my baby she knew more than they do so they kept trying to come up against her and god kept proving them wrong so don't let nobody tell you what they think about you and your past life and what you lived because god could correct everything about you uh once you say yes to him and when god finally showed me what happened at the end of revelations i knew like oh the beginning starts again okay that's what eternal life is about that's what life with christ and salvation and god dying for jesus dying for our sins and god sacrificing him on a cross for that's why that's why okay john three sixteen is here for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life that's a life everlasting when you start from one position of your life choosing yourself and then you end up choosing god and you live out your wrongs and whatever you done and when you finish that book and that revelation hit you and now you able to walk again with the connection of god and you have to start all over wouldn't you be ready to start over with god oh after you got so many things wrong with so many other people so many love relationships that failed you that hurt you that took you out your path that caused destruction and triumph and, i'm sorry and trials and, cha and chaos in your life or who didn't believe in you who didn't make time for you who didn't have that that love language with you wouldn't you rather start fresh with god baby because when you start fresh with god you start fresh and investing in you because what you attach to is truly attached to you because that energy is reciprocated because when you get with god baby you're getting with yourself when you get with god baby you walking in a new way that you never discovered about yourself when you attach to god when you connect with god you truly connecting to you and that's what the devil want to take from you that's what the devil want to counterfeit that's what he want to destroy he want to destroy the bond that you have with god because he don't have it so all he can do is throw this counterfeit at you this moment at you this situation at you to make you high up on this moment to give you snacks and feed you and feed you and feed you and feed you and so now you're in a trap and you stuck and now when you is you feeling stuck those thoughts and those things that's taking over your mind become really big and you feeling like oh guilty is charged i left my god to follow this i left my god to do this i left my god because of my own selfish fleshly desires i had twisted desires when really i wanted those desires of goodness that god planted in me because when god created the world he created the world fully and vegetation and fruit and filled it with animals and all beasts of his kind and all fruits of his kind and all gardens of his kind and all these things he created and then he created man and then he called it good it was good to God. But without God, is it good? Baby, without God, oh Lord, without God, is it good? That relationship without God, is it good? Jesus, that marriage without God, is it good? Whew. That job without God, is it good? your foundation how you operate without god is it good truly ask yourself truly ask yourself who would you rather detach from to grab that connection with god and start fresh with him allow him to love you the way that your true heart desire when you go home behind closed doors and your heart yearning for this thing and you so want it without God is it good I love you child of God
this was just truly a earful and if you were able to make it to this video in the end know that god is going to bless you know that god is going to bless you because if you one of the people that worry about time and if this video too long is this too long trust me god ain't operated or worried he he ain't he ain't worried about time he creates it so if you can't sit down and have that time to open yourself to receive then how much are you investing in you okay but if you chose to invest in this video know that god is going to bless you okay you're already blessed today you're already blessed i love you so much be well be great and know that god loves you child know that god loves you everything he do is according to his will for you choose his will instead of yours and if you chose yours first and you had to go around and come back up <laughs> go up under the water and come back up baby you still can breathe start over the devil got you thinking it's hard to start over the gap the devil got you thinking that <sighs> it's so hard to let go it ain't it's one step at a time when you run out of strength you ask god although god is silent even in your doubts he's still present and that's how god gets the glory out of every situation Mwah. be well i love you so much